All right, that last video was not quite uh, <laughs> seven minutes. Try to keep it short. Uh, anyway, but this one will be short because I just want to talk about, a, well, short is a relative term. I want to talk about these things. Crooks and liars, the Obama administration, right? New bank fraud deal, still unfair, still unjust, still unbalanced. Links below. Read the thing. It's short. And it basically makes it just as clear as possible. Our president, who is co-opted 100% by Goldman Sachs, right? Because government Sachs, they call them. Because he's surrounded by bankers. Absolutely surrounded by bankers. And they're trying to figure out how to avoid prosecution and how to actually make money off of this mess that they've created. And Obama's going along with it. Right? Trying to get the government to actually oversee. Look at all these agencies trying to oversee right, this transfer of wealth. And for them to actually make profit off of this should be outrageous to you. And for the president to open his mouth and say these words repeatedly that it may have been immoral, but it wasn't illegal. Did you hear him say that? Absolutely illegal. This SNL scandal was peanuts compared to how big this, this scandal is. Absolutely peanuts. And thousands went to jail. Now these bankers, right? Thousands of Occupy Wall Street protesters are going to jail, but none of the bankers. And then they're going to try and make it so that they profit even more? Are you kidding me? Now, I get these paltards, and I'm a paltard. I, I wear the moniker proudly, thank you. But I get these paltards that are like, I don't understand why the mainstream media don't give him a fair shake. Well, of course they don't give him a fair shake. The mainstream media, owned by the bankers, the bankers trying to avoid prosecution, and if Ron Paul got in and, and his attorney general was let loose on this scandal, they might do some investigation, which might lead to some prosecutions, which might lead to thousands of these guys going to jail for their illegal conduct. That's why. And then he wants to cut a trillion dollars from the, from the budget. A trillion! Do you understand the math behind a trillion? A thousand millions is a billion Right? And then how much is a trillion? How many billions? Ten hundred billion dollars. Do you know how much graft? Do you see, understand how much graft is there? How many guys is, I mean, like, you know, can tuck a hundred thousand here away and a hundred thousand there away? A hundred thousand dollars is peanuts, and that's more than you make in a year for the most part. Right? Millions and millions of dollars. That, you know, people can just chuck away. How do you think they're affording these condos here on, on Maui and in Cabo San Lucas? And how do they think they're affording the lifestyle of the rich and famous with this government money? And he wants to cut a trillion dollars? And even and then even then, what how many of these uh, people that are just used to having the government jobs, right? We're getting to the point where government workers make more money than private sector workers. Something wrong with that, because private sector, it takes a few private sector workers to pay for you people in government. And he wants to cut those jobs? Of course these guys are, are flipping out. And then take a look at how the media is married to the bankers. Literally. Of course they hate Ron Paul. Now, Catherine Albright. It's awesome trying to warn you about RFID chips. I've got the links below for that. Uh, we're seeing, here's even more reasons why Democrats, liberals, and other progressives are choosing Ron Paul. And make sure you watch that just two-minute video of Ron Paul making that guy look like an ass. right? And waking a lot of my friends up, we're going, wait a minute, you mean that he doesn't want to just cut off all these benefits? No, he's trying to figure out how to fund these benefits and then wean them off. A strong economy is the number one way to do that. And the number one way to do it is for people to become productive Right? exercise their creativity, have freedom and liberty, be able to you know, open their own business or start their own small business or have a job right, where they make their own way. And then when they make their dollars, their money doesn't erode. Right? <laughs> it, I mean, it takes twice as many dollars, even using their own BS numbers from, say, 1982 to today, right, 30 years, right, a dollar then is worth, you know, 50 cents now. But from 1913 to now, it's one dollar is worth a nickel. And they're not dollars. They're Federal Reserve notes. These are notes. And they want to try and, you know, levy an excise tax on your privilege to use those notes. Very carefully worded. Anyway, you know, 
Ron Paul supporting decriminalization. And look at that in Portugal. Since they did the decrim in Portugal on the drugs there, 50% drop in drug use in Portugal. They have no basis for their stupid arguments. The only thing that they can do is tell you that, you know, if society will go crazy. No, society will be better if we decriminalize. Prohibition didn't work then. It's not working now. Right? Hugely, that rep, that that's a huge issue for people. But it's still not as big an issue as the economy. It's the economy, stupid. The main thing is the main thing. The Federal Reserve is causing this poverty in the United States because of the silent inflation tax. Ron Paul understands this, and he's talking about it. All right? Number two, Ron Paul supporting the freedom to choose what you eat and drink, including raw milk, oh my God. You know, eliminate the FDA. The FDA has been co-opted now by the co very corporations that they're supposed to regulate and police. Right? Unbelievable what they want to do with, you know, nutritional supplements and so forth. And just think of all those people in the FDA who don't want to see Ron Paul get elected. Ron Paul would shut down the secret military business. Obama said he would, but uh, gee, they're still open. And a lot of you guys are so forgiving. Well, you know, he just couldn't... I don't forgive him. I don't forgive the torture. I don't forgive him not persecuting the torturers in the previous administration. And I certainly don't forgive him the, you know, helping the bankers to make more profit off of this insane mess that they've made. Right? Paul War, anti Paul War. Paul, Ron Paul pro peace. Right? Obama pro war. Then they should rewrite that cuz he's pro peace, not anti war. Fed wants to end, right? Ron Paul wants to end the Fed. Well, he, and even then he talks about you can't just get rid of the Fed the same way you just can't get rid of Head Start. You have to phase it out. You have to give the Fed some competition. You got to give the Fed, uh, you know, some sunlight, some exposure, and people will make their own choices and repeal some of these ridiculous laws where, where you and I can't contract. If I want to, you know, charge you silver, then I should be able to get paid in silver. If I want to pay my taxes in silver, I should be able to pay my taxes in silver. Right? Vehicle tax and so forth. But no, you're forced to use the FRN. Ron Paul doesn't need a teleprompter. That's the other thing. The guy can shoot from the cuff and give a straight answer. Right? Because he's been saying the same thing for 25 years. So it's like, you know, it's not rehearsed anymore. It's memorized. There's a big difference. Because these are his core beliefs. And he can espouse them clearly and succinctly. And it blows the pundits' minds. Watch that video. Like I said, two minutes to make a jackass look like a jackass. Right? Not really a Republican loyalist, is more of a libertarian. Right? Actually he is a Republican loyalist, but not the Republican Party that we have today, the Republican Party of 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 your right. Look at some of the, the things that, that Teddy Roosevelt said about how we need to restrain corporations and how corporations I mean he would be rolling over in his grave if corporations are people. And corporations get you know, he's said that there should be laws, this is Theodore Roosevelt, about uh, keeping corporations from being able to donate or you know, offer money to politicians in the form of donations or campaign contributions. That's the Republican Party of the old days. This new Republican Party, you know, of neocons. Anyway, uh, Ron Paul would like to make it so that free speech is legal again. And then Ron Paul wants to investigate the crooks in Washington. Right? You, I mean, the, his social program, he is the only one trying to figure out how to pay for these people that have become dependent on government and then phase it out and make it so that they become independent. Right? And it's going to be hard work, and he talks about this, because these people have become dependent. But you can't just cut them off, and he's never said, let's just cut them off. Right? The only thing he wants to do where he would say, okay, we'll stop it immediately, is these wars. Withdraw. Right? Get the troops on the boats and get them back. And by the way, that other thing, uh, people are, I'm, I'm sure are going to dislike this portion, but it's war, my friends. It's war. War is an ugly thing. Like I said, women get raped, babies get burned in war. Always have, always will. Enemies, dead bodies get pissed on by the victorious soldiers, right? And worse, right? That's just war, right? I hope to God those Marines don't suffer too much repercussion because they're in the middle of a war fighting men that are trying to kill them. Right? And this whole thing about, okay, I'm, I'm pro-peace, but damn it, it's war. 
And these are hard men out there fighting and dying in a situation that most of our politicians don't have the guts to bring them home from. So if they're out there doing the atrocious things that happen during atrocious wars, it's what you get, guys. It's war. Right? We got to we got to by their own numbers, we kill one, you know 23 for every one guy we get. And you guys are looking the other way. And then you look then when they come home, more military suicides than combat deaths. We look the other way on that, too. It's an ugly, ugly thing. It's time to end it. And this whole propaganda thing about how these Marines are... Right? It's war. Right? Bad things happen during war. So maybe we shouldn't put our boys in harm's way and put them in the middle of these wars when, you know, if you can't handle the truth, you can't see... Right? That's the least of what's going on over there. Anyway, again, Catherine Albright talking about RFID chips. And there's more links. And if you like some of the links that I have down there, please share them. And I appreciate your support. And, you know, I just got to get out there and work hard, spread the info, spread the word. All right? We've got a long ways to go. It's going to be a long, hard fight because you know that they're going to try and steal these elections. Instead of looking the other way, you need to expose the fraud. And try to stay a step ahead of them, right? Better organized, right? And again, like I said, it could be twice as good to be counting as half as good, or ten times, you know, ten times more work. And now it's starting to pay off. And you'll see another link there where CNN is starting to have to admit, right? Contains no news is actually having to admit that Ron Paul's got support, massive support, all races, all walks of life, all colors. Liberty is popular. Right? With the young, with the old, Ron Paul is popular. And they can't hide it. They can't hide it. They tried to crush it. They, ca- they tried, and all it's doing is backfiring. Keep on keeping on, guys, because I'm telling you, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. 